Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm back with another Ellie update. Um, it has officially been uh, one month since we found out she has autism. I kind of wanted to go over some of the things that the doctors noticed um, in Ellie. Uh, some of her behaviors that were a little alarming. Um, but like I've said before, I nor Robert had no idea that she had autism before uh, a month ago. So, um, but some of the, th some of the things that the doctors had noticed was, um, her not speaking, even though she does have cochlear implants, uh, where she's at in her hearing age, she should be, uh, speaking, um, the poor eye contact, um, Ellie does not engage, um, with people very well. Um, she has more eye contact with me more than anybody else. Um, Usually she just doesn't look at people. She just looks around people. Um, never, never the eye contact. Um, another thing that the doctors noticed was her um, arm flapping. And if you've seen some of the videos, you've seen her do her little like arm flapping thing. It's, she usually does it when she's happy or excited or sometimes when she's nervous, but not really more. It's more of a happy thing that when she does it. Um, Another thing is her vocal uh, noises she makes. Um, some of the things that I've noticed since somebody said that she had autism was her, um, obviously her being nonverbal, um, her eye contact, um, her hand movements and hand um, flapping, arm flapping. Um, her vocal noises she makes, she's ah, ah, and she'll do that for hours like the other day um she did it literally all day long um she closes her eyes when she is overwhelmed um and i think that's her way of like shutting everybody out um and then a lot of the times you'll see her um stare at the ceiling or just kind of like stare off for a minute um or like zone out um i had asked her pediatrician about this a few months ago and because um, I was a little bit concerned, it was like her having seizures because seizures do run in um, Robert's side of the family or, or epilepsy, I should say. Um, and so I was, it was just kind of on my radar because radar I, you know, it does run in the family and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't that type of stuff. Um, and she didn't seem too concerned because Ellie wasn't feeling like tired after it happened and um, she wasn't, um, she wasn't showing the signs of having epilepsy. She was just like zoning out for a minute and that was it. Um, and come to find out that's more an autism sign than it is um, epilepsy. So um, um, I wanted to go over something that I learned um, and that's called stemming. Um, and if you've seen Ellie do her arm flapping thing, that is called stemming. It's also, um, when she does her vocal things, it's called vocal stemming. Um, and it is, and I'll read the definition. It is a repetitive behavior that an individual engages in because there's something that feels good internally about doing it. These behaviors often seem random or odd to outside observers. So um, any like repetitive motion she has or something she does over and over and over, um, it's called stemming. So um, sometimes you'll see kids flap their arms, which is pretty common. Um, sometimes you'll see them just like run back and forth in a, a spot. And Ellie does do that too. Like she'll find something that stimulates her. And so she'll just do it over and over and over. And she'll do it for like 30 minutes to an hour or something like that. Like the other day she was rubbing her face on the um, table because she thought it felt good, but she kept going back and doing it over and over and so that would have been her stemming. Um, also her vocal stemmings are the ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, but she'll do it over and over and over and over and over. So um, yeah, that's something I've learned and um, it's kind of interesting. It's just something she does and it's fine, but I'm sure that other people will be like, why is that kid doing that? But so that is some of the like behavior stuff that we noticed um, in the last month, um, and the doctors have also um, taught us, or I've done research and, and learned about these things. So um, that brings me to Ellie's um, autism um, 
diagnosis. So today, um, I had an appointment this morning to go ahead and start her um, on the road to her um, diagnosis. So I've got uh, four appointments this month that are all evaluations to go over like her, um, how she, it's just all like behavior stuff and they're just gonna like watch her and evaluate her. Um, and you just have to have all these appointments um, one of them, we're going to a play group to see how she interacts with other people or other kids her age. Uh, one is at home to see how she acts at home. Um, another one is at a different office. Um, and then she'll also have two different doctor appointments that she'll have to have. Um, and this is all like, all combined will give her her diagnosis. So her diagnosis appointment date is set for the third. Now, um, I have a few of the appointments all set up, but if the doctor doesn't get back to me because she's on vacation right now, if she doesn't get back to me and get the doctor appointments in within the next month, then it'll be a little bit later for the, um, the um, diagnosis appointment. So it's actually all happening like really fast and I wasn't really expecting it. Um, because when we were doing it in Portland, it was like you have a six to nine month waiting list. And when you go, you do everything on one day, which I'm really happy that we're doing it in where we live. And Ellie doesn't have to go through everything on one day. I think it's really nice that they kind of break it up into like one evaluation this week and one next week. And we'll go do this um, evaluation at this place. And um, the two doctor's appointments are different days. Um, and then all of those appointments combined um, on the third, they'll give her her diagnosis. So um, yeah, it's all happening super fast and um, which is great because then she can get the services she needs um, and the help she needs to help her um, communicate with us a little bit better. Um, and she also has another speech therapist that she's working with. She's also got um, her case manager that's coming out to our house uh, twice a month. She has her deaf and hard of hearing teacher that comes out um, every week. Um, she lots of appointments, lots of help, and um, her future looks bright even though the diagnosis is in the near future. So. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being so supportive and um, I really, really appreciate it. And Robert does too. I know you don't see him too much, but um, he is um, really happy that I'm making these videos. And I'm hoping that um, as I am learning to cope with everything that's going on, that I'm helping somebody else as well. So yeah, I just want to thank everybody for watching and please share this with somebody you know that has a kid with autism. Maybe it'll help them. Um, maybe we could like, maybe it'll give me somebody to talk to. I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, leave a comment, share, like, and as always, uh, thanks for being so supportive and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Have fun, Ellie.